with the power off, so we'll turn that back on. Yeah, it would be. So now you know if the power ever goes out in the first period, don't worry, Mr. Hall's got you. Always got my flashlight. Now, want to get into this idea of waves. So if we're really going to talk about light, you've got to understand a little bit about waves. Before we do that, I need a bare necessities moment here. Okay. So we gotta talk a little bit about waves. You're gonna love this. Or anybody says anything, but you can hide it, not to change. You suck at drawing. Yeah, I do. What about it? So here's the thing we're going to start looking at. Here is a wave. So it's traveling through the glacier. So there are certain points on a wave that we care about. And we care about these because it makes life a lot simpler. So we're going to label parts of this, and then we're going to look at giving you some identities and ideas, because I want to take like conceptual stuff we're going to talk about and try to get it to where you can grasp it. That's the goal of what we're looking for. So the highest points of the waves, so there, 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 anybody know what those points are called? Is not the frequency. I appreciate the effort. I don't wait. Wavelength? Appreciate the effort, but not. The climax. Some of you use, use this this morning. It's a certain brand of toothpaste. Crest, crest. <laughs> it is crest. I don't know, like a crest will leave. I got you now. So these are our crests. All crests are highest point of a wave. yourself help. Do you know what the lowest points are? It's all something to do with the ocean if I get. Yeah. He should have worn box. Yeah. Alright, at the bottom of the whole guy. It would have been so yeah. much more It's not. going to make some sense. It helps students remember this. This is what you typically see pigs eating out of. A trough. Trough. I thought it was pronounced trough. These are the lowest point. I give you these points for a reason. And it's to help you get an idea of wavelength. Now, wavelength isn't too bad. All this is is the length. between 
the same two positions on a wave. That's the key. So, somebody brought up wavelength in the class. This is why we take this time to break this down. When you're going to find a wavelength, it's the measurement between the same positions on the wave. This is how we can find wavelength. I'm going to be honest with you. The easiest way to make a wavelength measurement is going from crest to crest or trough to trough. You can choose this point, but guess what? It has to match up as the same point. That's how you get the wavelength. I can choose here. I can choose any of that. Now someone brought up the other idea of what we're going to talk about. I want to introduce a unit to you. It's going to mess with you a little bit. Be okay. Somebody brought up frequency. When you hear the word frequency, you should think about frequent. And when you think about frequent, it's about how often something happens. So frequency is how often. Wave passes. The key to this is wavelength. You have to measure on the same point. you're trying to find frequency, it's the number of waves over time. So however long it took for that wave to pass through. So we can calculate that. We spend time, honestly I feel like it'd be a waste of time. Here's the thing I want you to get. Up on top, what would be the units? The number of waves is just a, it's a number. On the bottom is time. What's the international system of unit for time? Second. So in terms of units, this would break down. Now the blue is just, the teal is just blue, light blue, teal, whatever color you women are going to tell me that is because I'm wrong. It's just a number. We want to break it down to the most common, so it would be like a 1 over second. This unit is something I want you to get familiar with. Now I'm going to use an exponent law. <coughs> if you think I break math, go talk to Miss Cole, go talk to Miss Augebright, Check this out. This is also equal to the inverse second. I use that for a reason. We do some calculations later. That's going to be handed to you. This also, now, I'm not breaking math. Scientists just look and say, let's call it this. Capital H, little z, also known as Hertz. So this is what you're looking at whenever you're looking at a wave. Now, we talked about one wave property. Before we get out of here today, I want to hit a way to really prove that light is in fact 
away. If you don't got a flashlight, it's okay. You need to get one so that you can do this. I will go on and tell you the mad scientist that came up with this idea. It was back in 1801. It was Thomas Young. This has become one of the most famous experiments in the world. You can walk on to any university and you can name this, and I promise you the science department can talk to you about it. The experiment we're going to talk about, the double slit experiment. So this is what happened in the double slit experiment. You have a light emitting source. Now here's the thing. What does light sources do? They expand, right? my light waves. It's spinning. Because that light source is going to run it out. So what happens is, if you would draw through, if I put this wall here, will that light source shine through the wall? No. The name tells you everything. Double slit. We put two slits. One here and one here. Doesn't matter where the slits are, but there has to be two. And this is why. What's going to happen hmm. let's say right here at the red. Hopefully it shows up better on the video. Right here at the red, what happens with the light coming in here? So it's going to start like this is a new source, and it's going to start at that point. So it's going to be very small, right? But then what does light do is it gets farther and farther away. It expands. So this thing will keep expanding. But then on the flip side, you've got a second slit. On the second slit, I'm going to call it green. Same thing takes place. Green. Is anybody here colorblind? <laughs> I just thought about that. Because if you are, you're probably just seeing red. So here's the thing that takes place. Is once you do that on the back wall, we have a back wall. And you see a specific pattern take place on this. What you see is you have points that happen. So like here, and then you got light here, and here, and here, and here. You see where the two waves are crossing? Something interesting takes place. We find ourselves in a situation of interference. This is what's happening With the interference. Thank you. 
the interference takes place, that interference gives us this pattern at the bottom. So you see the sparks where I have the marker? That's where we're seeing light. You see the white spots? There's no light there. So it's like light, no light, light, no light. This is what we call an interference pattern. The reason this takes place is when you come over, light can either increase and help itself or it can fight against itself. And it's all about what matches up with which. Hey! Almost finished. I will see you tomorrow. All right, so, exciting day. Get to work on clothes, cheers, dance routines, one last day. Yeah. Well, when we sign out tomorrow, it'll be okay. Yeah. Everybody will leave. I already tell you, I already know it. Uh, they'll be here for first beer. Yeah, I'll be here for this class. I can't, I can't afford to miss this. <laughs> All right. Yesterday we left off. We talked about a bunch of things. We talked about parts of a wave. The last thing we left off with when we started driving with was the 1901 experiment that Thomas Young did called the double slit experiment. I introduce this to you now for a reason. It will come back. <clears throat> the key with the double slit experiment is that there was two slits, light came through both slits. But what happens is we get an interference pattern on the back. It makes sense. We have this interference pattern. So you got spots on it. So like where these black bands are, we have light. So we're seeing light. So light's going through there, but then in the, I know it seems counterproductive, but where the white spots are, there's no light being seen. There's a reason behind this. The whole purpose and the reason we see this is the waves are interfering with each other. So we see this interference pattern. What's happening in an interference pattern is the waves are interfering with each other. Opposite points on the wave are hitting and canceling each other out. So here at the spots where we see no light, opposite points of the wave are hitting. Points where we're seeing light, that's where the same points are hitting. So, Everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Yes, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which is stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Mark. So, here's what we're seeing. At these points where we got light meeting, learn that space. So where we see light, this is kind of the way to look at it. 
This is where a crest and a crest has met. That's a hot point, boy. Or this is where a trough and a trough has met. Low point of the way. This is why it's the same points on the wave, so they're not fighting each other. It's flowing together. It's kind of like if you ever look at where you have water flowing in the same direction from two streams. So I like to fish. One of my favorite things when I go bass fishing is when I'm wade fishing and I see an island in the middle of a river. So that means one thing. I can fish the left side and the right side. And they're going to be bass. It's going to be great. It's going to be wonderful. But what happens is when you come to the end of the island, this water on the left side, it's flowing this way. Water on this side is flowing this way. They're flowing the same way. The waves are going the same direction. They just flow together. They don't interfere with each other. Now, on the other hand, think of like a delta where you've got water that's intersecting in opposite directions. What happens then? Do you get a swirl? They're fighting, they're interfering with each other. This is what happens at the point with no light. Anybody want to take pictures? This is hilarious. <laughs> yep. Hi. Hello. See if all you want to just meet Stephen, come in so it makes sense. You're a mermaid, man. He's part of I need a little hat, though. It don't make no sense. You type a little hat. I ain't got no little hat. Fuck you. I think you'll use Stephen. Can I get victory, though? Yeah, I'm coming. I don't even want to. Yeah, y'all want to take a picture? Take a picture. Come on, y'all. All right, so back to this. So the interference pattern, the second half of it, is where we see no light. Opposite points on the wave are meeting up. So the way to look at this is a crest. Where's the trough? Where's the trough? The trough? Yeah. <laughs> this is what we're seeing with this interference pattern. So this is how waves can increase or decrease. Cancel out, build each other up. This is why the double slit experiment is so important. And what does the double slit experiment show? It shows that light is a wave. How did it show that light is a wave? With the double slit experiment. How? Interference. interference pattern. Interference pattern is characteristic of what? Waves. Because if I sent particles through the double slit experiment, what would you expect to see here? So let's say I roll bowling balls. If the bowling ball hit here, it's going to be stopped by the wall. But if the bowling ball rolls through the slit, what will happen? It's going to hit the wall. Well, we went through that slit. Where's that wall? Well, then I'll have two bands, and that's it, right? That should make sense. Why? Because a particle can go through here, or a particle can go through there. See? No point. Okay. Okay, let's say we did the same thing we did as with particles. 
Yeah, this is a particle. Now. So the particle comes out. It's the wall. Slit one. Slit two. What would you expect to see? out from that point and it's waves so it's interfering with the other way in this case if I took bowling balls and we were sending them down these two slits will the bowling balls and please pretend we are like professional bowlers and we can get it in a straight line and it's never going to move all right my bowling skills are off I'll tell my wife I'll be here every time though she's going to suck some worse than me I did use the letter win when we dated, not anymore. <laughs> Got the girl now. I win. So we're sending them in a straight line. So we keep sending them in a straight line. Are those bowling balls ever going to interfere with each other? No. Why? Because the particles are the particles. They're not expanding. They're fixed in position. They can't expand out. So what happens is here on the back wall, we have the indent points. It's two bands. Which is characteristic of particles. Particles. So bands are particles. No. You just said that. <laughs> but these two bands. This is just showing me. This is the pattern. That extra hour will be not worth it. <laughs> this is the thing. Double slit experiment showed what when it came to light? That light is a wave. How did it do that? By showing that it expands. Interference pattern. But what's an interference pattern? You remember when we had this and there's a bunch of bands and there's no light, light, no light, light, no light, light, no light, light? That, that's an interference pattern. Come see me. Sure. I'll be here. Come see me. Okay. Set me up a little table and everything. So, now, we get to the fun stuff. Bless you. Thank you. Whenever you talk about life, the question is, what is light? A wave. The other question we have, what is light? What is on this pretty picture on my board? Visible light scale. Yes, but what is all of this? Electromagnetic. What is on the electromagnetic spectrum? <coughs> TV light. Radio waves or light. You all are doing great, but you're missing points right now because there's one solid answer. What is guaranteed to be found on the electromagnetic spectrum? Microwaves. Electromagnetic. Radiation. Radiation. Thank you. Can I get bonus points for that? No. Especially because you slept through my class. You said, no, me no go to chemistry. Me get other hours of sleep. 
Yeah. You gotta come back at lunch. You don't get nothing. <laughs> you don't even eat today. <laughs> So, electromagnetic radiation. We know that light is on there. Light is electromagnetic radiation. So what is electromagnetic radiation? A wave or particle? It's the radiation that is a particle. It's a wave. Thank you. How do you know it's a wave? Because it has a bunch of wavelengths on it. This is how it told us. That works sometimes. Give me scientific evidence. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's touch. well it's like the magnet, and you know, for magnetic pull, it's magnetic <laughs> plate, it. so therefore the wave. I love how you're trying. Because um, it doesn't have, have physical mass, it doesn't bump into each other. It keeps expanding and expanding. I don't think y'all are picking up on what I want you to pick up on. So I'm going to help you. What does this mean? It ripples like the waves. If this is purple, what does it mean? Important. Increasing. Ultra important. Double foot experiment. It is a double foot experiment. That purple. It came out in 1801. How do you know electromagnetic radiation is a wave? A double slit experiment. Double slit experiment. Why does this show that electromagnetic radiation is a wet? Because it interferes pattern. Interference pattern. Got it? Now, there are some relationships we can draw when it comes to electromagnetic radiation. And for all of my math geeks in here, don't worry. You thought math would leave chemistry. Math never no leave chemistry. We only take break for conceptual ideas. It come back. So there's two equations. I want to introduce you to the two light equations. Yes, the first one we shall label out. C. This time I don't mean yes, I mean C. No, can Not It's a good shot. But this one Carbon. is one that should sound very familiar to you. But I have to give you the rest of the formula before I start breaking it down. So please wait. You've got me too excited. Carbon. Equals. A lambda. A lambda. <laughs> Dino. Okay. Times lowercase. Micro. No. No. That's not micro. Dinosaur. Now. So let's discuss the first of the two light equations. C. Very special to us. You've heard of C before. Albert Einstein has stuck it into your brain. E equals MC squared. What is C? E equals MC squared. I think you said it. What did you say, Al? E. I said it every time. <laughs> what about like? Do a beautiful job aiding with a Y. You'll, you'll make me so proud. This is the speed of life. No, I said MC hammer because you said it was MC. Oh, that's funny, though. Yeah, that was just. 
Speed of light. Does anybody know what the speed of light is? Yes, it's like it's like nine point one 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 two three four five six seven eight nine ten six two zero five five four. Okay, nobody listen to God. I don't know. The speed of light. You all can walk out of here today, and you can walk around and go. Do you know the speed of light? I do in your face. <laughs> In this class, we care about the accuracy and precision. So if anybody looks at you and ever tells you 3.00, you'll say, no, it isn't. I'll give you permission. It is 2.98 times 10 to the 8th power. Meters per second. Very important. You make sure you get your units there. They do matter. Now, as you all learned in the previous lessons with that Godzilla's number, do you think Mr. Hall is going to write that on the board or give it to you on your quiz? Yep. No. No, what must you do? Memorize it. Study, memorize it. Take it home with you. You write it on a piece of paper and set it on a pillow next to you in the bed. And you'll say, I will remember the speed of light. See? Now, this is the thing. The speed of light is equal to dino, as you like to say, me call it lambda. Dino V. Lambda is wavelength. Now, did Mr. Hart mention about metric conversions? No, never leaving class. See. It's stay in class, yes? Sadly. Very good. What are some units for wavelength? Nanometers. Oh, that's beautiful. That's a, that's a good one. Give me some other ones. Meters. Oh, my goodness. Micrometers. Woo! Look at you! Why not? We'll stop there. Why? Because this thing just keeps going. Here's the important any thing. Any prefix with meters. <laughs> what? I said any prefix. And then you just say Look at you. Oh, it just wraps it all in a pretty nice bow and gives it to us. So actually, we don't go to sleep. Like, so, like, <laughs> so, <laughs> Yes, you go to sleep. <laughs> so, 5 o'clock in the evening is actually 5 o'clock. Pico meters. <laughs> and 5 o'clock in the morning is actually uh, 8 meters. Dalton, I think you've slept too much. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to combine that. breaking down here. every second, and he's just like, just 5 o'clock is actually yeah, 5 a.m. and p.m. 8 a.m. and p.m. at 5. Yeah. Second of all. Oh. Every second. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, see, I didn't sleep too much. I'm a genius. Yeah, I haven't slept enough. Okay, anyway, let's go up to the renewal. This is frequency. What is the unit for frequency? about the inverse. Hey! Inverse. inverse seconds, yeah. one over seconds, or as we like to use them, hertz. It's like frequency is prophesying what this problem is going to be like. It will hurt. Hey, I want you to notice something for me. What is the units for the speed of light? Meters per second. Oh, very nice. What is frequency? Inverse seconds, one over seconds. So it makes sense. Hey, what about wavelength? Oh, hot diggity dog. That comes in all sorts of stuff. Oh, wow, that's meters per second. Look at that. What do you think your wavelength got to be in if you're going to make this calculation? Meters per second. What's the wavelength got to be in? Meters. 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 Yeah, it just, it just makes too much sense again. Help us. Yeah. Oh.
your weight be? Must be Peter. You listen to me. You have a great, wonderful day. I'll see you later.